Hello there, I'm your host Dan Rojas and today we're going to be making an insulated vacuum pipe for your water project coming off of the roof of your house or your carport down into your house. A lot of people have emailed me that they do their solar project and then they run their piping down and they lose a lot of heat from the outlet of their solar project into their house because it's either very cold outside or they run their piping a really long distance. The piping that you want to use for hot water is CPVC. This is three quarter inch CPVC. Uh, you can take insulation and wrap it around it. It kind of looks a little messy and it's it works but it doesn't work very well. So with this project it's going to cost about a dollar thirty a linear foot to do this. What I have is one and a half inch regular PVC pipe. This is the thick wall type. I also have three quarter inch regular PVC, which is a thin walled version, and I have three quarter inch CPVC. One of the neat things about CPVC is that it's a little bit smaller than regular PVC. So when you do the thin walled regular PVC, the CPVC will actually slide down inside of it. So this piece will slide all the way down and you end up with the CPVC inside. It's not a perfect fit. It's a little um, little baggy, uh, thicker walled, three quarter inch PVC. Fits too snug. You actually have to sand this down a little bit to get it to fit. So I like to use the thin walled for this project. What we're going to be doing is putting our CPVC inside of a piece of regular PVC like this and we're going to create a vacuum around it. PVC comes in 10 foot sections. This is actually 9 foot 11 inches. So what you want to do though is have the CPVC sticking out of the ends so you can put your slide connectors on the end and connect them together all the way down. So what you're going to have to do is cut this. Now since I'm putting a T in there we have to measure the distance of the T to accommodate for that because we're going to be splitting this down the middle. For this project you're going to need a one and a half inch T, you're going to need one and a half inch to three quarter inch reducers or adapters for that. You're also going to need, uh, you're going to need two for the ends, you're going to need one more with the threading. I'm using a regular um, spigot valve here to draw the vacuum out of and then close this so each one will have these. You don't have to do the T and this, uh, you can tap a hole inside of the one and a half inch pipe, put a ball check valve, draw a vacuum and then close it. But this is easier, it's a couple bucks more, but this way you can see down inside too whenever I show you what's going on. And you're going to need two one and a half inch uh, fittings for these to go in. You're going to notice these are filthy because I actually forgot to buy these when I was at the hardware store. So these are ones that I had laying around forever. So I'll be using those. You're also going to need some all-purpose PVC cement. This is for regular PVC and CPVC and some pipe threading. When you're at the hardware store, it's a good idea to make sure that your one and a half inch to three quarter inch adapter is really snug on the PVC. Sometimes lots of PVC that they run can be a little thinner. Normally it's very consistent, but you want it to be really tight because we're going to be customizing this piece. Inside of the adapter, there is a little ridge right there that the PVC normally goes right up against and stops to. We're going to be taking that off. Now when you do this, you want to make sure that you don't damage this part out here because our seal is actually going to be right here. If the PVC fits nice and snug, it'll work perfectly. If it doesn't, you're going to end up with a leak and lose all of your vacuum. I'm going to be showing you the pretty much barbaric way of doing it. I have a cordless drill with a three quarter inch bit on it. It's actually a large bit. It's got nice sharp teeth. Now you don't want to damage this part right here. So what I'm going to do is put the bit at an angle and remove that ridge by just simply pushing against it. So when you're done you should have something that looks like this. What this is going to enable us to do is slide the PVC all the way through. 
you want to finish this edge off with a piece of sandpaper. If you have a Dremel with the uh, sanding bits, go ahead and take it off with that because it will be a lot cleaner. What this should enable you to do is to take your piece the backwards way and slide your pipe all the way through it. So when you put it through the right way, you can slide it down the pipe. This is PVC cleaner. You use it to prep it before you actually put the glue on. It's a good idea to use this stuff because it works really well. It comes in clear or purple. Um, they pretty much do the same thing. You want to use all of this in a well ventilated area because they produce a lot of fumes and it's really smelly and it give you a really bad headache. And also, I like to wear gloves because I get a little messy with this stuff. There's other ways of cutting PVC. This is an old pair of uh, pipe cutters that I have. This doesn't work really well for the um, thin walled PVC. It has a tendency to crush it. So you can also get the kind that uh, screws on and then you turn it and it falls off. That leaves very nice edges. The thinner stuff is a little tricky to cut with a regular chop saw because the blade has a tendency to chip it. I put the pipe cleaner on this. You can see that some of the type actually comes off. Uh, we're going to put the T on first. So you don't have to do both surfaces, but I usually like to get one surface on the pipe. And then if you need to use a whole lot of this stuff. You just want to make sure you cover every area. And you also want to make sure that when you push it together, you get it all the way in like that. I like to give it a little twist slowly. And then when I feel it lock, stop twisting it. What that does, it melts the plastic together. It basically welds it. So when you twist it, you stretch the bonds and it makes it a lot better. So we've got one put on there. So I've got those two put firmly together and you want to push them all the way in. It's real important that they go up against that stop. So if you did it right, you should have about six inches of the other PVC sticking out of each side. All right, now that you've cleaned everything up, you just want to put only one. Don't do both of them. Just put one of your pieces all the way in and make sure it's snug in there. So you want to slide it in the end that's not done through, and it's a little tricky to get it to meet up with that hole. You have to do it a few times, kind of as a bit of luck, but it actually does work. So it'll come out the other side like this. This... Uh, the regular PVC, the three quarter inch piece, you want to take six inches off of it too. That's something to keep in mind. That way uh, it's shorter than your CPVC and you have room for the connectors. So you stick it out about this much and what we're going to do is put glue here and then tap it in. So we've got the pipe cleaner on there. For this next step you got to work kind of quick. You want to put your glue, don't put it all the way to the end. Leave about maybe a quarter of an inch but cover it up to this point. There's about an inch and a half of this sticking out. You're going to need like a 2x4 piece of wood because you don't want to hit it with a piece of steel. And you tap this in to where it's like that. So you want to go ahead and prepare your next piece. Do the uh, cleaner, the PVC glue, and put these two together. This is going to be an all-in-one shot deal. So this is a little tricky to do. you got to get PVC glue here, here, and here. And then you have to make sure that you get this just right. And then you're going to slide it in. And you're going to want to make sure that this goes in as far as it possibly can. I clamped this other side down to the table and I've ditched the gloves for right now because this is a tricky move right here. So you want to find that pipe, get it lined up, and then shove it on there nice and tight and give it a twist so that everything goes in. Now what I've done at our center tee is I have taken a small piece of cardboard and I've just bent it around and slipped it through there. What's going to happen when this pipe, uh, when the CPVC inside of this pipe fills with water, it's going to be weighted, so it's going to want to go down. This will provide a barrier so it doesn't touch the outer area here. Probably won't make a huge difference, but every little bit's going to help with this. So that's just a regular piece of corrugated cardboard cut to about a 1 inch by 4 inch strip, bent around the pipe and it's resting on the bottom. I've cleaned and glued this piece, put it in there, and we're going to put some pipe threading on this. What you want to do is have the base of whatever you're doing pointing towards your left. And then you want to take the take the tape and wrap it towards you. So 
you want to come around towards you. This is a real easy way to remember which way to go. The reason you want to do this is when you start to turn it and tighten it, when you're tightening it, it doesn't knock your threading off like that. You're tightening this way. So to your left and towards you. So your CPV should fit in there pretty snugly and slide right down the center like that. You want to leave enough out of the ends for connectors. You want to make this as tight as possible because you don't want to lose uh, anything here. Where your pipes connect together, you can actually wrap a little bit of insulation around there. This is the other side. And you can also do this. You can take and uh, pull it out like this, put a nice bead of silicone around there, and just push it in like that so the silicone seals. This will keep a draft from getting in there. It's a really tight space, but the vacuum is not around this. The vacuum is on the outside of this piece. So what you end up with is you get insulation from the piping, you get insulation from the vacuum, you get insulation from this piece of PVC, and insulation from this, and it actually holds the temperature a really long time. So I have a water hose adapter to a small tube fitting, and it goes on there like this. You're going to need some sort of a vacuum pump. This is a really high quality one. You can actually buy them for about 20 bucks. You want to make sure the valve's all the way open. So I've let this sit here for about two hours and I'm going to see if this actually held. So you can see that that actually held the vacuum. It's a good idea to let these uh, set overnight to make sure that everything's fine before you do your final installation. You want to make sure that there's no leaks or anything like that. This big spigot I did because it's simple and quick. You could uh, wrap this to protect it and bury this in, in the ground. Um, or you could use a one-way check valve like this. These are a little bit more expensive, but you'd want to make sure that the check valve comes towards you. That way when the vacuum's in, it pulls it closed. Um, the vacuum will actually open this up and then it'll seal itself. They sell these in a lot smaller profiles. So instead of having a big spigot like this sticking out, you can actually just have a little knob there. Um, you can also drill into the PVC and tap it with threading that's more complex because if you don't do that right, you're never going to hold the vacuum. So this kind of works really good. The two most likely places that you're going to lose your vacuum is right here. So you want to tighten this down with a wrench all the way down. You want to bring this all the way down flush there. And also right here where we customized it because this doesn't go up against the stop. So what you should do is once the glue's dried after about two hours, you want to make sure that there's no glue residue there. You want to take silicone and just put a nice bead around there and push it in there make like a nice finish for it and then draw your vacuum and that'll suck the silicone up into the uh, grooves there if there is a leak where you connect them together this piece should actually be just enough for the fitting so you're gonna have this mirrored on the other side you wanna wrap a little bit of uh, foam insulation around there just because you're gonna lose heat at that little spot but it's not gonna be really bad you get the advantage of the entire length of the pipe wrapped in a vacuum. I actually use the same technique right there for this big back washable water filter that I made. We had a well that was going bad and it was pumping about six pounds of sand in a day. So what I did was to get the sand out of the water, I put a well point in here. So the water would actually get sucked into here go down the outside of the pipe into a well point which is just a piece of PVC with a bunch of fine slits in it. The sand would collect on the outside, the water would go into the middle, up and out here, and this was just an auxiliary I put, this was our main water flow, and then down at the very bottom I could actually backwash the outside so all the sand would blow out of the bottom. We finally had to replace the well because you shouldn't pump that much sand out of the ground and get a sinkhole in Florida. I'm your host Dan Rojas. Thank you for watching and enjoy our videos.
It's pretty tight. It should be really snug. It's important that it's really snug. I believe that.